Hello guys, Anaracti here, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to speedrun like Dream. Dream is one of the best speedrunners in the world. He's so good that he's able to speedrun a Minecraft game and win whilst his friends are hunting him down. Dream literally has a whole series on his channel just dedicated to speedruns. He has beaten some world records and is overall known as one of the best speedrunners in the game. In this video, I'm going to be teaching you guys exactly what Dream does to be able to successfully speedrun this game all the time. If you find this helpful, be sure that you like the video and subscribe to my channel. Also, follow me on all social medias if you can because it would be greatly appreciated. Now let's get into the topic. In a normal speedrun for any game, the goal is to beat the game as fast as possible. For Minecraft, there is many factors that may cost you time ranging from accidentally forgetting to eat all the way to just getting an overall bad seed. Now you may be asking yourself, how can you get a bad seed for Minecraft? People beat it no matter what seed they are on. Well yes, this is true for a normal game. When speed running you need specific stuff to be near each other to make sure everything goes as fast as possible. Firstly, let's talk about your spawn point. You want to spawn in a desert biome or right outside of one. You want to make sure that you're still able to get wood as wood is very important for any crafting you may have to do. You need to spawn in a desert biome so that you can find a temple, a village, and a pool of lava. You could find a village or a pool of lava outside of a desert but it's better to find everything in the desert because that's where the temple is going to be. If the world seed is bad, these things may be far apart that it can cost your time. Now I'm going to be going into more detail about why you need to find each of these places. When you first enter the village, what you want to remember to do is grab every bed. The beds will be useful for when you get to the dragon because they will blow up in the end so when the dragon is hovering above the ground, you can use the beds to do lots of damage. Now, I don't really know how good I explained it so here's an example of Dream doing it. As you can see, once he placed the bed, it exploded causing more damage to be dealt to the dragon than if you just hit it with your sword. Next, you want to collect the hay. The hay will be turned into wheat which can be used for bread. I think this part is pretty self-explanatory so I'm just going to go on to the next part. You will then want to kill the iron golem by hitting it then stack up to where it can't reach you but you can reach it. Let's watch a clip of Dream doing this as an example. As you can see, Dream did misclick at one point which may have cost him a few seconds but you get the idea of what you have to do. Killing the iron golem is important because it allows you to get some iron without mining. You will want to have enough iron to craft a bucket and flint and steel. You want to find gravel and water fast because filling up that bucket with water and making flint and steel is very important to the speedrun. Before we get into why you need to find the temple, I want to say be sure to craft all stone tools besides a hoe as fast as possible because these tools will save you a bunch of time. Also, also, when you're in the temple, be sure to collect all the TNT from the bottom because it will help you if you have to do any mining. Now let's talk about why a temple is important. When you enter a temple, you will see that it's four chests, but what you want to take out of these chests is all the ores, golden apples, and string. This is basic stuff, but something else that may not be there but is really important is an enchantment book that has looting. Here's a clip of Dream and his friend's reaction to when Dream found a looting book. Oh! <gasps> yes! Finally. What you will want to do is use your diamonds to make a diamond sword and you put the looting on the sword. Now you may be saying, don't you need the diamonds for a pickaxe so you can get obsidian? That's a good question, but the answer is no. You may be confused now, but that takes us into the next thing you need to spawn near, which is a lava pool. You will use your water bucket and the lava pool to make the nether portal. This would be really confusing to explain in words, so let's just watch Dream do it. He did that pretty fast because he is experienced but with a bit of practice you will soon be able to do it as fast as him or even faster. Now you are in the nether and you have to find a fortress and at this point this will either ruin the speedrun or completely make it go in your way. If you spawn too far from the fortress then you should just completely restart the speedrun at that point unless you're just not going for a world record time and you're just going for your own personal best. But if you spawn close enough to the fortress and you find it within enough time you're gonna enter that fortress and find blaze as fast as possible. You will want to make sure that you get at least 8 blaze rods before you leave which is why looting is very important to have because then it will let you get the rods even quicker. 
Once you get to the overworld, you will want to craft the blaze rods into blaze powder and use it to make eyes of ender. Make sure you get enough blaze rods to where if your eyes of ender break, you will still have enough for the portal. It takes 12 eyes of ender to fully activate the end portal, and each block of the portal has a 10% chance of containing an eye, so chances are you will need a good amount of these. After following the eyes, it's up to you to dig down to the stronghold where you'll find the end portal. Before entering the portal, make sure you have beds, a sword, a water bucket, and a bow. These things are needed to successfully speedrun killing the dragon. If you guys found this video helpful at all or just enjoyed it overall, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. I will link down the video of Dream beating the 1.15 world record if you guys want to take notes on what he did for yourself. Overall, I tried my best to explain this and I hope you found it at all helpful. Anyways, that's it for this video and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.